Hey y'all, this is Anna Alexander. Welcome back to the bedroom on this day where I'm watching all of the shows and that includes returning as I adjust my seat to the high seas. This is Black Sail season three, episode three. Season three, episode three, the magic number. So where are we? So Black Beard and Vane, we got the lowdown. Vane was his protege. Eleanor in her youth to to exert some dominance on the island got vain and horny gold to say mr teach captain your services are no longer required and that's how he left so now he's back to reclaim some sense of i'm going with nostalgia but that's not it returning to the old ways and he has found a corporate nassau that has partners and checks and balances and a safety cushion where men don't have to scrape and battle and 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 survival the fittest oh no so what does he do with this information and the walrus the walrus is just after a terrible battle. No, no, it wasn't even the battle. It was this battle followed by the storm and things were flying and masts were breaking and men were drowning. And now they are stagnant. No wind. Miles from safety. How does Flint keep everybody from freaking the hell out? And I think John's just done with it. Yeah, I think that's where we are. I remembered more than I thought it was. But thank you so much for being with me on this journey. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. This show's crazy pants. It is crazy pants. So we are going to get under the big cozy blanket because it's chilly now out here. And I just last night figured out how to use the heat in my room. So it's been extra 68 in case you're wondering you know how i roll that's cold for me i have some sparkling strawberry lemonade for my citrus beverage to keep away the scurvy let me know where you are let me know what you're drinking and also follow me on patreon where you can watch this whole thing with me from beginning to end and then roll right into the great british bake-off afterward because why not why not yeah so if you're ready i think i'm ready and let's get to it these are identical that we exchange it to find partners and trade coin for commodities far easier to protect. I return. Here's the thing about trading coin for commodities. A coin is a coin. It's as the value is what I guess the government is back. Whoever's providing that coin can back it up with. I think once upon a time, I say it's sterling silver. Now I think it's just take our word for it. But a dollar is a dollar. This figurine, this adorable little Tinkerbell figurine is only worth as much as somebody wants to pay for it. So Max's plan of trading it for commodities. What's the value of that commodity in one to two days, years, months? Hmm, hmm, hmm. So she trading it for pearls and gemstones. Again, only worth as much as somebody wants to pay for it, but I guess it's the same for gold too. Son of the wealthiest man in St. Kitts, they say. Also say he fucks his partner out their trading company. Well, he does know how to multitask, doesn't he? That was not. Nice. That was nice. Now shall we conclude our business? 316 black pearls. Black pearls. The method of our figuring this value for each item has been recorded if either party wishes to know it. I would like to see it, please. So Max, what is Max's experience with trading? <laughs> uh, um. Is there no end to the surprises this place has to offer? Mm. Yeah, uh. I imagine she comes from slave stock. I'm sorry, I can't even form a sentence anymore. And she can dress as a civilized woman, but to behave as one, 
That is impressive. You seem like a lovely creature. When the governor arrives, if you do indeed flee, there'd be a place for you in my employ. Governor. Employ. What governor? You don't know, do you? Invasion? A fleet. Eight ships, soldiers, several hundred. News of this is spreading quickly. How long? Apparently not quickly. Until they arrive here. Did they, did they really, really think England was never going to come back? That's what I thought that they were preparing for. Whatever it is, six guns ain't going to be enough to stop it. If they were supporting a fleet in the bay. How many of those crews can we honestly expect to participate in that fight? A third? What if it were all of them? Burgess. Woodall. The Cochrans. Have you met those people? They're not exactly a <laughs> rally around a flag sort. Well, they got a common enemy, right? All organized for battle. Organized under who? Flint is still nowhere to be found. You return in time, and if he doesn't, I'll do it. Look me in the face and tell me you doubt it. If we all unite, the fight that we will present to our invaders will appear so costly and painful they will choose to walk away from it rather than risk humiliation at our hands. They'll risk the humiliation. Because they'll be dead. The date has been set for our arrival in Nassau. And when that happens, decisions are going to be made over a matter of hours that will determine the future of the island. For hours? I think you're going to have minutes. What is this? The address I intend to make to the inhabitants of Nassau which I will invite them all to accept the king's pardon and join my efforts to restore law. This is fascinating because this was like essentially Thomas's plan though, right? Sort of? Captain Hornigold believes that without Captain Flint, there is no one left on that island capable of mounting an organized defense of the bay. Do you disagree? Yes. But that doesn't mean that the others won't mount a disorganized one. If the Navy took over, stormed the beach and cleared it, why would that be such a bad thing? take months to pacify the island by force it would be preferable to me to spend those months building commerce instead of putting out fires too bad welcome to nasa it's all about putting out fires you're not saying that you can't win you're saying it would take too long to win it so why are you so concerned about the time there were a number of parties to whom I had to make promises in exchange for their support of this operation. So they want their money back immediately. But there is one particular party whose patience I do not wish to test. We follow. Spain. Hmm. What did you have to promise them? Their gold back. That I would seize Fort Nassau, secure the remains of the Urca de Lima's gold stored within it, and return it to Havana. Well, it's gone. Some of it. Failure to do so would confirm for them that I am simply a pirate by another name and would result in the launch of a fleet of 10 ships and soldiers numbering 1,500 to raise Nassau to the ground. How long did they give you? Tomorrow. Eight weeks. <laughs> Fool! We're all dead men. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smoked by a storm. The product of his rage. <gasps> Day 12. I would be blown in those seals. Would it work? No. They don't have rows? Like, okay, trying to row a ship that size, I know. Impossible. But. We'll have to cut the men's rations again. I agree. Or you start eating the men. Food stores have been empty for about three days, and the haul from the eel nets isn't keeping pace. Mr. Silver. Oh, he's suggesting something terrible. It can't be uniform. The decreases in rations. At a certain point, if we're all weak and beyond the point at which any of us can hoist our sails, we're all dead anyway. You think we should feed some of the men more than others? No, I think we should feed some of the men and not others. And John. John is beholden to all of the crew. I will challenge you with the men and resist this plan. Oh, John, that is a, that is a bold If you challenge me in any way state. while we exist in this state, I will be forced to make an issue of how we entered into it in the first place. Well, it's his responsibility to challenge you. Not now. Not in this state. John's gonna do it anyway. But as captain in a life-threatening situation, 
It is my right to have complete control over ship and men. I will compile two lists. Why don't you, why don't you just start eating the paper? We'll need to keep a close eye on him. As dehydration sets in, we will all be subject to its effects. He isn't losing his mind. He thinks I have lost my reason. But the events of Charleston and everything since is driving me mad. Is it? I, well, interesting that Flint is, is sort of entrusting and I guess entrusting is the closest word I can think of right now to Billy. We understand there are eight ships, not six. Yes to the rest of us. Jesus Christ, Jack. Uh, if I may. Oh, this dude. It stands to reason that if we threaten to defend this place, Jacob, then we right? need to have a plan to follow through. We fight to protect the island. With who in command of the fleet? No one's seen Flint in weeks. When he hears news of the invasion, he'll return. But if he doesn't, no man has his skill in leading a fleet. I think battle. it's also fascinating that they all think Flint's alive. That he, you know, like, there's so much that could happen at sea. You turn your back on us now. I can see his point, though. If no Flint, the they, strategy involved in coordinating... The fact that he, the, he may be incapacitated is not even in their thoughts. That any captain in this room who speaks in opposition to this plan, opposition born from, what, a fear of losing, will not long call himself captain. Oh, wait. Was he inspired, inspired by a teach there, Jack? Flint is dead. Mm -hmm. Went down in a storm, pursued by the leading edge of this invasion force, a pirate hunter by the name of Benjamin Hornigold. Mm -hmm. Before anyone commits to anything, just know that you'll be doing it without Flint. But... But I may be able to offer an alternative. What do you want in return, sir? Let us agree that... You walk downstairs without something to bring those men together. There will be no defense of this harbor. And you can offer me that something. Yes, me. I am prepared to step into Captain Flint's shoes. In the man of war? If. Once I've done it, you agree to join me in sailing away from here for good. Hmm. Ooh. Now why does... Why does... Teach want Vane by his side. I am committed to it. Consider what this place has forced you to become since you made that commitment. Slaveholder. <laughs> no, that was the... Ooh, that was the... Word. He could have used. I do not seek your partnership because I am too weak to defend myself. I don't seek it to protect my things or to increase profit. Then why do you? Because he loves you. You've been gone eight years. And suddenly my partnership is this valuable to you? Eight years. Nine wives. No sons. Okay, so it is love, just a different love? There's an instinct to leave behind something made in one's own image. Nature has denied me the ability, it would seem, but not the need. Well, of course, if you stuck around more than a couple of weeks, maybe you would have had those sons. He's leaving. Once this is done, assuming we're still alive, he's leaving with Teach. It bothers me. I don't know why, but it bothers me. Why do you think that is? Just give a shit what he thinks of you. You always have. He's your friend, ish. He's your work wife. Plenty of men in this place done plenty of stupid shit. Just to hear Charles Vane call him a proper pirate. It might be you're the only one who actually made a career of it. <laughs> Any fish? Oh, eels. Okay. An eel or two. <gasps> John's still not the cook, is he? I heard you refused your water ration yesterday. Ooh. Flint's only crying to me the ration is a fuck you. Those men, all of them, even the ones left out, 
They trust you to be able to stand up to the captain when the time comes. And you can't do that if he's got his strength and you don't. Well, I don't think John, John would ever be able to take Flint physically. There is no denying a man with that kind of power. What are you talking about? You're saying Flint conjured that storm. He conjured us into it. Mm -hmm. Totally. And who's more powerful? The one who made the storm or the one who convinced us into battle to defeat it? During that feud with Vane over the fort, I sat in his cabin and I watched him turn himself inside out over the idea that anyone in NASA would see him as the villain in that story. Well, now he's the greatest villain in the new world. And I think the only way he can imagine it stopping is when there are no more of us left to witness it. Fucking hell, Fucking babes! Hmm. You both stand accused of a crime most serious. <sighs> Theft of food held in reserve at a time such as this. And it's up to John to deliver the power. A full day's rations are now gone. Yet each of you accuses the other of the crime. I wouldn't have done such a thing. I don't have it in me. But you're all pirates, so you all have something in you. I withered the shit as well as any of you. So don't fucking tell me I do something that's fucking cowardly. One of us is a lie, all right, but it sure as fuck isn't me. Wait, so one of them ate a full day's rations of the whole ship. Won't somebody have some pep in their step? More than the other? Or they both go. Captain. Thank you. Oh dear God, thank you for seeing the truth. Does anyone have anything to say? Okay, all you sailing people. How? Do you get your ship to move without a motor when you are becalmed? Is are you just at the mercy of whatever tide there may be? That's it. You're just at the mercy of whatever tide you, that there may be until the wind picks up. Why are you so set on stay? Where the fuck could you want to live in a world that says that fat pig on the beach is a man to be respected? A world that wants its sons to become that. When I was very small. I would sneak out of the slave quarters at night to the main house. I would stand outside the window to the parlor. Inside that house was a little girl, my age. I watched her dance while her father played music and her mother sewed. I watched her read and eat and sing. Wow, Max stood at that window for a long time. Kept safe and warm and clean by her father. My father. Oh! The things it took to make that room possible, they were awful things. But inside that room was peace. Our roads are going to diverge. Let it be now so we may not live in fear of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is the response. The men on this ship, this is crazy. What's John up to? Maybe you were right. Hmm. Maybe he is dangerous to us in this state. 
Maybe there is nothing we can do to stop him right <laughs> now without shattering the crew. But. But if he kills another innocent man in this group to make a point, I'm going to do something about it. So I suggest you get the situation under control before that happens. Is that why Billy never wants to be quartermaster? Because <laughs> he doesn't want to have to make those. I, I those... just don't see why. Jesus. Gates figured it out. Gates figured it out. He did, did he? The Barlow woman figured it out. He listened to them. Okay. Miranda, yes. Gates? He saw them as his equal. He respected them that way, so he was willing to listen. Both of those people ended up dead. One at his hand! One at his hand! Oh my god, I would have to do something, but I guess it's too hot to do anything. I'm thinking that... I'm not thinking. I'm finding it interesting that in all of his hallucinations, he keeps seeing Miranda, but he's never seen Thomas. Which is a great deal of his motivation. When I lost Thomas, I raged. I was distraught. I wept. But with you, I'm ruined over you. Hmm. Thank you for kind of sort of answering this question. And then I spoke and bade you cast aside your shame. And Captain Flint was born into the world. The part of you that always existed, yet never were you willing to allow into the light of day. I was mistress to you when you needed love. I was wife to you when you needed understanding. But first and before all, I was mother. Huh. And there was no way he was ever going to be rid of Flint. I will guide you through it. But at its end is where you must leave me. Wait, guide him through what? And at its end lies the answer you refuse to see. I have a thought I'm going to say for later. Oh, there's death. Oh, they're acting kind of excited. Welcome. Oh. The flogman are rot. After the rot. Yeah, I was gonna say. Make ready the launch. You don't care. Make ready the launch. It's either eat each other or eat a rotten rail carcass. You gonna row out there on your own? I'm one of two men who've been on full rations for the last few days. You're the other. Let's go. <laughs> So not even Billy's on full rations. This is where I throw you overboard. So they do have oars <laughs> to row that great big huge ass ship. That there's no way reaching the water, but I would be just desperate enough. I stole it from you. <gasps> He's gonna come clean about this page. The Earth could go. Oh, he's coming clean about the gold. Like, round two. Round two theft. I told you we were deceived about it having been recovered by the Spanish. It wasn't entirely true. You were deceived. I built the lie, enlisted the scouts, arranged a sale of the information to Captain Rackham. You know, I've had my fill of hearing you go on about this crew being too weak to keep up with you. But don't you for a second believe I fit that description. You will account for me. Why are you telling me all this? So you can decide to fight me or acknowledge the fact that you and I would be a hell of a lot better off as partners than as rivals. What did you do with your share? I gave up my claim to it. To who? Ma. Why did you do that? Because I saw no way to hold it and remain a part of this crew. And without these men, 
What was I hoping was an invalid? Very interesting. Because, yeah, the... Not having the gold was only one piece of the puzzle going out to Charleston. Oh, it stinks. I do, thank you. Let's not, ugh. They're gonna haul that whole thing. John, what you doing? That's fresher, fresher meat. Stop! Oh, you only had one chance because then they're going to scatter. Got one little tiny fish. No fish. Oh, there's one still there. Okay, it didn't scare him all away. Don't lose it. So, until you find wind, you just keep going back and out there and fish next to that whale carcass? Where is it taking you, fellas? Oh, oh, you're chumming the water now. That'll take a while. Again? <clears throat> we'll talk about sashimi. You've earned that water, sir. Sure. I'm alive. Because I'm still alive, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Catch it! Catch it! There are masts at the mouth of the harbor. Appear to be in a firing line. Ooh. You recognize any of their banners? It's all of them. Is there any approach in the harbor mouth? result in significant damage to our fleet. Apparently, Captain teaches every bit the tactician. Oh, they know Teach is there. Oh, how did what they figure that out? I'm suggesting that I see no obvious he means by which we can reclaim Nassau town. Then I'll go to the beach myself. I will have a launch ferry me to the sand alone, and I will make the pardon address. It is out of the question. Why? Because my charge is to ensure this endeavor's safety and yours, and I'll not answer to a plan that reckless. Shouldn't be you. Eleanor's going to follow. If you sent someone else to read the pardon address, someone known to the men on that beach, it might work. Did you go to read the address? No, it can't be me either. I have too many enemies between here Morning and the gold. beach. Then who? Him. Half the men in that bay have sailed under him at one point or another. They respect him. And they will kill him. The other half will... They'd grant him passage under a flag of truce and they'd listen to what he had to say. And you don't give a shit if he dies in the process. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, and Frame went out with him. Mm. <gasps> oh. Why are we letting him pass? Because I'm curious. Shoot on that man. And under the flag of truce. And the half of NASA that remember him as the foundation of this place will rebel against the other half. In the name of the governor of New Providence Island, the time has come to bring a wayward child back into the fold. Well, that's it. Start off by calling them children. That's rejected its parent empire. Sorry, I didn't find it you for device. It's named my children. Apparently Alexa like that. 
Who will accept that embrace? Who will renounce violence against the crown? Who will renounce piracy? No matter how irredeemable you believe it to be, your king and your governor wish to offer you a clean slate. All of you, that is, but one. One so committed to disorder and chaos that his presence is incompatible with civilized society. There shall be a bounty of 10,000 pounds sterling for the capture of the pirate Charles Vane, dead or alive. <laughs> Well, they've got 10,000 in gold themselves. I mean... This dude. Now, they might not be able to shoot on horny gold, but who says they can't shoot on this dude? What the fuck's he doing? Captain? Oh, some gunmen are going with him? How many? So where are you fellas? I feel like on the back half of Nassau, I laugh so hard. So if you are an indigenous tribe and you see strangers on their ship, I'm, I'm thinking at this point, sailors on a ship from another place coming on your beach is not that unheard of. How quickly do you engage? And how, oh, and or how long do you wait, see what they do to just gather some water or whatever and take off right away do you just let them be or do you immediately pound them into dirt that's my question pros and cons of either happening anywho so flint knows the truth about john flint had been told from the first that the gold was on the beach relatively supposedly unguarded would flint have still gone to charleston i think he would have still gone would he i think he would i think he still would have gone to charleston so what happened at charleston would have still occurred and then i think he would have Come. The gold would have been backup plan. Charleston failed. He still had the gold. Would he have made different choices while there if he had backup plan gold in his pocket? I don't know. Because I think Miranda would have still pushed him to go to Charleston and having Ash there. Yes? Or am I remembering things differently? What I'm finding intriguing is so Hornigold delivers the proclamation. Hoo -hoo. Some men are taking it up on them. Some men who were considered the weak links of the whole defense to start with. So does this just now give Teach an opportunity to mow him down without compunction? Before you kind of sort of had to play nice because I may need you to be on my team. But now I know you're not on my team and that you would turn on me at first glance. I have... No bothers to give and we'll take you out. Because again, he won't fire on horny gold under the flag of truce. But those other fellas. I don't foresee any anything going forward where a battle's not forthcoming. Boo boo, there we go. Episode chapter 21. Chapter 21, episode 3. Thank you all so much for being here with me and just watching me go, what is happening for the next however long it was? It's been a treat. So do not be strangers. Make sure you hit subscribe so you know when the next video drops. Again, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Anything that you leave does help out the channel immensely. And until next time, this is just your reminder to drink your water. Mm -hmm. 
drink your water, don't eat bloated whale, um, stretch your bodies, and come back and watch the next video in the queue. So thanks again, y'all, and until next time.